What's up, weirdo? She Tree Surgeon here with the one and only Shay Lisi, mother of frogs, crasher away, breaker of motorcycles, queen of all the Florida men, and today we're making terrible decisions. So yeah, I mean, just like any other Monday, let's do it. No road trip to go look at a sketchy motorcycle that I definitely probably shouldn't be buying right now is complete without gas station snacks, baby. We got a uh, large size big rig, Baja blast my brains out. In lieu of any gas station glizzies being available, and no Van Holten's pickles. They had those other ones, but I'm a Van Holten's man myself. Got pickled sausage in a pouch. Baby, we love it, dude. It does in a pinch. Very schweppy, very rare. Lady Gaga edition <laughs> Oreos. What the hell is that? I don't know, but I'm just reading that they expired in May. <laughs> People are always afraid of pickled meat in a bag, but I'm not afraid of anything, apparently. Mm, delicious. I actually do like these. I know, that's why people all over the country think that Americans eat like this. Because of meat? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is American as it gets, man. Freaking, freaking Tijuana mamas in a bag, dude. I love them. Give us a review on those expired cookies. I guess. Um, if it's a Lady Gaga flavor, then it'll taste like ham, maybe. <laughs> What's the verdict? Do they taste like anything besides regular Oreos? <laughs> I don't know if we're getting a delicious out of this one. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. You can scan it to unlock a fun experience, though. I want a refund. <laughs> I'm enjoying the hell out of my pickled meat. I'm not having a fun experience. Maybe this will save it. Are you ready for the fun? <laughs> I don't think it works. I think the website expired, too. <laughs> Zero fun. Okay, after the tragedy that was the Lady Gaga Oreos, we made another stop at racetrack because- uh, Halo really 2, baby! <laughs> Jay Lisi was deeply disappointed, but uh, now she's got ice cream, Halo 2, baby, freaking gummy worms, Fritos, and uh, they had a glizzy, all right? They had ice cream shop inside the gas station. <laughs> Life is all right. Well! <laughs> I don't think we've ever gotten a bike where it didn't rain on us when we went to pick it up. And uh, uh, this new, newest bike is proving no exception to that rule. And I even, I knew it was like on and off raining, but I, I didn't even bring rain gear with me because I was like, oh, I can, get just, I can just get rained on a little bit. And now it's just like uh, pouring. Don't worry, it ain't gonna stay green for long. Uh, this is James Franco. We got Willem Dafoe's The Green Goblin and James Franco. I can't wait for us to go on a ride together. First time we've been on a ride together with both with uh, Harleys for uh, since the FXR blew up. <laughs> You'll never take me alive, Spider-Man. All right, well, here, fingers crossed, this is a 2001 Sportster with 7,900 miles on it. I just bought it, and we're just gonna go ahead and see if it'll make about 65 miles back to Tampa. Here we go again. I don't know exactly why I cannot stay away from dicey motorcycles for not a lot of money, <laughs> but a baby, I can't say no. Definitely doesn't want to idle, but the dude did say the gas is pretty old. I, I, I was talking to him and well, let me tell you, $1,500 for this bike, like you can't go wrong with a $1,500 Harley and I'm, I'm currently riding it. <laughs> I was, I was trying to bust him up on the price a little bit because why not, man? I mean, I'm a human being. I got to try to get a deal. I was like, man, it's going to need new tires. These tires are original. It's only got 7,000 miles on it. These tires are from 2001. They're 20 years old. And he goes like, I don't know what you're talking about. They got plenty of good tread left on them. Look at them. And I was like, uh, all right, I'm not going to have this argument right now. I'm just going to pay you the 1500 bucks and walk and take the bike. It was his wife's bike. And he was like, hey, you know, I know they need to be run. So, you know, I started up and run it around the block maybe like, uh, you know, one or two times a year. Uh, that really isn't enough. But, uh, okay, you were you were trying, bud. You were trying. It's all right. So he also hasn't, the gas is like a couple years old too. So I'm sure it's turned into turpentine in there. Oh, man. Dude, it's rained on me so many times when I'm buying bikes. As I spill gas all over it. Well, luckily the rain will wash it off. It's rained on me so many times when I'm buying bikes now that I just got to go ahead and say it's lucky. Because <laughs> to do anything else besides that would just have me to give in to freaking despair. Well, let's see if uh, 
a little bit of fresh gas cleared up that car, but I'm just gonna have to go ahead and tell you guys about it because I'm not about to ice another GoPro in this rain. Well, here I am, it made it back. Again, uh, you'll just have to take my word for it, but it was a very wet ride. I got absolutely monsoon poured on probably like every other five miles. It was just on and off, with, which is somehow just more annoying than it just raining the whole time. <laughs> Here it is, a 20-year-old Sportster with 8,000 miles on it. More on exactly what we're doing with this bike and why in a little bit. But I'll tell you this, I am the proud new owner of a 2001 80 83 Sportster, the second Harley I've ever owned after my FXR, and the cheapest Harley I've ever owned because I paid two grand for the FXR and fifteen hundred bucks for that one. Catch you guys in uh, a little bit. I got <laughs> I gotta go home and do some editing and uh, go clean out the trailer from Forgotten Angels camp out and pack up some T-shirt orders. But here we go, the adventures of the fifteen hundred dollar Sportster. Catch up with y'all tomorrow. So you might be asking yourself, what the hell is Shade Tree Surgeon doing with yet another Sportster in the shop? And yes, it's exactly the same color as the Green Goblin, an 883, not a 1200. That's on purpose. Well, I got this bike for a very specific reason, and it's not really for original reasons. It's, this has been done before, but you know what? I haven't done it. So the idea behind this 2001 883, at least I think it's a 2001, is that we're going to build it into an adventure bike. Yes, adventure. Adventure Sportsters, Off-Road Sportsters, the Dirtster, top tier hipster level shit right here. Yes, this has been done before. It's been done many times. It's been done by tons of people. Everyone from Rusty Butcher to Hugo Moto to, uh, to Dan Dan Fireman, uh, Jordan Ray Vlogs, like this has been done. But here's the deal. This is a $1,500 bike. As you guys know, I just got back from the desert. I was in the Mojave Desert and I was out there for a Harley Davidson event riding around the Pan America Harley Davidson adventure bike. So cool, Harley built an ADV bike. You can go off road on a Harley. You can have a Harley adventure bike. You guys know what I always say. What I always say, any bike's a dirt bike, any bike's an adventure bike, okay? The only thing you gotta do to make something a dirt bike is point it towards the dirt and twist the throttle. The only thing you gotta do to make something adventure bike is to go on an adventure, but you still kind of want to hook things up a little bit better, make it a little more capable. So that's what I'm going to do. Now you might say like, hey, maybe this is a this is a little different because yeah, lots of people have like uh, done dual sport conversions on their Sportsters, but has anyone really documented an adventure on one, which is what I'm planning to do more on that later. And the answer to that is yes, not on a Sportster, but pretty much this is exactly what Jake the Garden Snake did with his FZ07, is he turned it into a Tenere 700 and then immediately took it on a really awesome adventure. Well, I'm copying you, man. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. But on a Sportster, and not any Sportster, a rigid mount 2001 Sportster that we paid 1500 bucks for. And and here's why. I, I went out, the Pan America is amazing. If you can afford a Pan America, go get one. Amazing motorcycle. I can't afford a Pan America. It's a pretty expensive bike. I, I can't afford any brand new bike, really, unless it's pretty cheap, but you know what I can afford? A $1,500 Sportster. You know what else I can afford? Maybe another $1,000 to $1,500 worth of parts to make it cool. So that's essentially what I'm trying to do with this is a budget adventure bike build. And when I say budget, I'm really, I'm gonna try to do things as cheap as possible while still making it as capable as I possibly can. So I wanna try to keep the total cost of the motorcycle under $4,000, which is not chump change. $4,000 is a lot of money, but $4,000, you could definitely buy a used KLR 650 and go on an adventure. For $4,000, you could finally find a used DR 650 too, or some, some other very, very low budget adventure bike that's already kind of set up for that you're not gonna have to do too much else to, but that just sounds a little bit too easy. Let's do it on a Sportster instead. The whole point of this is doing it on a cheap Harley Davidson. You can do it on a Harley, you can have an adventure on a Harley da Davidson ADV bike. They make one now, it's the Pan America. We're still gonna do it on a Harley. It's just not gonna cost Pan America money. Basically what I'm trying to do is I wanna buy and build a whole adventure bike for less than the Pan years cost on a Pan America. Actually, they probably cost a lot less than four grand. I say four grand, but hopefully we'll actually keep it like even under that, like 
Fingers crossed. I chose the 883 on purpose, mainly because I was worried about fuel consumption and if you're going on an adventure, and basically what I want to do is a Trans-American Trail. I want to take this eventually, and I'll probably do a couple of test runs somewhere else first, but I want to take a Sportster all the way down the Trans-American Trail, one that I've, I've converted myself, that I did the work on myself, that costs, you know, just not a lot of money. It's a budget build, like anybody can do it on a GS, and anybody can do it on a Pan America now, too. Not everybody can do it on a Sportster, but everybody can do it on a Sportster because it's so much more affordable and so on. I get that even though the few thousand dollars it would cost to do this, while you know for most people that's affordable in the range in a realm of something they can afford for a bike, that's still not affordable for everybody. I digress. We're here to speak of adventure, not facts and figures and numbers and all those little things. Adventure is what we crave, and adventure is what we'll do. So yeah, 883 Sports which later on a bunch of people told me pretty much 883s get the same gas mileage as a 1200 it should have just got a 1200 oh well i got an 883 now so as i was saying just a second ago before i got taken over by the thought of adventure but before we can go on an adventure we still gotta make it a little more capable than it is right now i do already have some parts let's hop inside and we're gonna go through the parts i got for the bike already couple more things to order, a couple more things I don't know how to do that I still have to research, but I, I, do, I got a good start on this one. Everyone's like, but you never finished anything. This is not gonna be like that. This one, I very carefully done all, all my research. I've already pre-ordered all the parts. So what, what, what ended up happening to me with these other builds, like a chopper build or, or, uh, or any of these other things is, it's like, uh, like, again, we'll reference Jake the Garden Snake. You're talking about like a bolt shit on series. When you're just bolting parts on, it's a lot easier because they're already ready to go on the bike. When you're building something from scratch, it's easy to get lost. Uh, and again, I'm going to try to make this easy. Most of, there's going to be some fabrication, but most of the stuff that I got for this bike is going to bolt right on it. That's the whole point too, is I'm capable of some fabrication. I wouldn't say I'm very great at it. I'm capable of a little bit, but again, the whole idea of this is accessibility. If there's anything I hate, it's gatekeeping. Motorcycles for everybody, buddy. I like bike and expensive bikes are nice, but not everybody can afford an expensive bike. Not everybody's a welder. Not everybody's a fabricator. I just, this is about doing something that pretty much anybody with a basic set of tools and two or three brain cells could do. Now, that's me. I, I, I'm the guy. I got two or three brain cells. I'm not very smart, but I can lift heavy things. I think we'll be all right. All right, guys, I got a few different parts here. Most of it's from TC Brothers, and if you guys are familiar with Jordan Ray vlogs, he's also built an off-road, I'll call it the dual sporty, the dirtster baby. He built one of those as well. He did, got most of his stuff from TC Brothers as well, and I got a lot of the same stuff he did, but if you wanna see a dual sport, sportster build that's already done, he has one. Now, there's one thing that when I was doing my research, he doesn't have it on his bike, but uh, really, really cool, and I'm gonna get to the TC Brothers stuff here in a second, but this thing right here, this is a motor, uh, this is a spring kit from Traction Dynamics. Uh, we'll see how it works, but they're claiming over seven inches of suspension travel off a 39 millimeter front end. One of the biggest problems when you're converting a Sportster to be a dual sport is of course suspension travel. Uh, the 39 millimeter front ends are pretty lame. Uh, they don't really have a lot of suspension travel. What a lot of people end up doing is they'll just end up doing like a dirt bike front end on it or a sport bike front end on it, just something that you have more control over. But the whole point of this was I want to keep it as simple as possible. Seven inches of travel out of a 39 millimeter front end, uh, we'll see. But the, the, I talked to the guys at Traction Dynamics on the phone because I had to, I was like, man, I got questions, okay? How do you do that? And it's literally just, here we go, man. It's a, it's a emulator kit. We've got the springs here. And since it's made to order, these are set up for my weight, which is even, which is very cool. Um, and then we've got these uh, these long dampening rods, which are much longer than the stock ones here, and these spacers, and uh, that's how it works. And they're saying seven inches out of this sucker. So there's only one way to find out. That's to stick it in there and see. And Traction Dynamics used to make this kit for a company that's called- what she said. They used to make this kit for a company called Hugo Moto, which is now out of business. And Hugo Moto made like a Sportster conversion kit. They made a dual sport conversion kit that you could just buy. Now, if they were still in business, I probably would have just bought that kit, but they're not. Traction Dynamics, when I talked to the guy on the phone, he goes, yeah, we used to make this for Hugo Moto. And when they went out of business, we just said, well, that's still a pretty cool kit. I guess we'll just continue to make it. And they did and I got one. I'm very excited about this. If this works, this is kind of a big deal because again, 
The front suspension on a Sportster is really one of the, well, not the only weak point, but one of the biggest weak points of, of the bike when you're talking about making an off-road machine is of course suspension in general, but especially on a Sportster, the 39 millimeter front ends are pretty much garbage. So this, uh, I'm gonna, I don't have them yet, but I'm gonna get some triple trees with a little bit of a wider clamping area, that and a fork brace. Hopefully that's gonna be enough to stiffen up that front end enough, have enough travel that I'm just not washing out the minute I look at sand. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because doing the whole Trans-American Trail from coast to coast, you go through a lot of different terrain and a lot of it is sand. Luckily for me, or unluckily, depending on which way you look at it, there's plenty of sand in Florida for me to test this out on. We got this guy over here from Tracker Die. This is solves another weak point on a Sportster, and TC Brothers actually makes one of these too, but I already had this, so I didn't know TC Brothers made one uh, until after I already had this one ordered. But I probably would have gone with the TC Brothers one just because I know those guys, I like them, I think they're pretty cool. Another weak point on a Sportster is the right peg mount. So right now that Sportster has forward controls on it. We're obviously changing that to mid controls. And one of the things that Hugo Moto did is they sold a kit to relocate the pegs a little farther back. That way, uh, you know, they, they, the, the, it's the right mounting point on the peg when you're really getting aggressive with it can snap off. Uh, it's just not a great mount and they're a little too far forward for serious standing up. I'm not trying to win any motocross races, so I don't need, think I need to move them backwards, but I did want to get something to beef up where that foot peg mounts is. And this is what this is. So this is a sprocket cover that's gonna go there. And this is where the foot peg's gonna mount up. And it's just a, a lot stronger than the stock stuff. Last thing I need is to be out in the middle of the woods in some mountain somewhere, go over a bump, come back down and snap off a foot peg mount. I'm not gonna open up this one because this is one that we put on the channel before. This is the what, everything you need to convert back to mid controls from forward control. So the sports I got is 100% stock. What's up for two things? 100% stock, except somebody put a windshield on it and somebody put forward controls on it. And those are the only things that got changed, which is a little bit annoying because I'm like, it had mid controls. It would have been perfect, the perfect donor bike. But hey, luckily TC Brothers has a super affordable kit to take take your sports back to mid controls. Actually, I said I was going to open it, but I am going to open it now. Even better, and I, maybe I'm wrong, and somebody please correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the big worries for me was the brake lever. The brake lever on Sportsters is aluminum, and the stock one's aluminum, and when you have a, an aluminum piece, everybody knows that aluminum either bends only once or it bends not at all. So having that be steel instead, and I think this is steel, I think that the shift lever is still aluminum, but I believe that this is steel. Having that be steel is definitely a great upgrade. Steel, you can bend back. Aluminum, you can't. And again, being without a rear brake in the middle of the mountains somewhere on a 2001 Sportster, probably not the best idea. And speaking of breaking things off and bashing things, a skid plate, also a pretty good idea. And we're getting into, into, the, into the big boxes. I don't know, man. Is there anything that feels better than opening up big boxes of motorcycle parts? Literally probably one of my favorite things to do. It's just so exciting. So much potential is contained within these boxes. Nothing but potential for adventure. Or potential for disaster too, I guess. But uh, oh, again from TC Bros right here as I quickly fill up my area with boxes. <laughs> this is a dual LED uh, kit that comes with everything, including like all the wiring, all the switches. It's kind of cool. It's got uh, the brackets here to mount two of them on there. So you have a high beam and a low beam, or I don't know, just wire them both up and point them in the right direction. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. I'm probably gonna try a couple different things out, but a couple different reasons I wanna go with this instead of the regular light. One being, uh, obviously the stock light is not very bright and a lot of the riding I'm gonna be doing is going to be in the middle of the woods, pitch black, no street lights. Want a little more, <laughs> a little more light as an option. And two, you need something tougher, like the just the chrome bezel, the, the headlight on the Sportster, if you drop it a couple times or smash it against something. I mean, you could sure you could break these if you tried hard enough as well, but gonna be a little bit tougher, gonna hold up a little better than the stock unit. And again, TC Bros, they sell this as like just a kit. So you get every everything, including the mounts and these two lights to hook it up and give yourself a dual LED. And they do a single one too, if that's more your style, but 
you know, they offer two, so I'm gonna get two. In from TC Bros, uh, you can't really be running a belt if you're gonna be rolling over rocks and going through the woods. Like, if everything's sandy, maybe you could get away with a belt if all you were gonna do was sand because there's just not a lot of rocks. Like, maybe in Florida, you actually could just get away with running a belt. But, going cross country, again, all sorts of terrain, all sorts of rocks, all sorts of stuff like that. Gotta convert it to a chain. We don't have to, but I'm going to convert it to a chain. So I've got the chain uh, chain drive conversion kits once again from TC Bros. I got the chain and all the sprockets to do everything right here. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do in the rear brake yet, but for the front brake, uh, pretty cool. So again, a cool little piece of kit from TC Bros. This is a bracket for a stock 39 millimeter front end. I've got a I got a floating rotor here. But this is a bracket that they make that allows you to run a radial mount Brembo. So yeah, my humble little 883 Sportster is gonna have a radial mount Brembo on front. This wasn't even that expensive. I didn't have to do it. Like I could probably just like roll with the stock brakes, but uh, I don't know, man, how cool is this? Like radial mount Brembo brakes on the, on the bike? I think that's pretty slick. So I was like, uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna do that, that's pretty neat. Now they don't make one for the rear, or at least they don't yet, but uh, so I'll have to figure out something else for the rear, because I mean, it's kind of whack to have like a Brembo front brake and something different in the rear, but we'll see what happens. I'm just, uh, I'm pretty gassed on this. I think it's really cool. And of course, if you guys saw, or maybe you didn't, this Porsche has cast wheels on it. Now, it's, it's so funny, because usually I'm the guy who's always like, going back to cast wheels from spokes. Um, I've, I've done that conversion on multiple different bikes, but this time we're still, we gotta go back to spokes from the cast wheels, which is so funny because I will not, I don't even wanna tell you how much money I had to pay to get a set of the 13 spoke cast wheels that are on that sports right now. Because everybody buys them up for FXRs and I just got this one. I'm like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. <laughs> I had to go through hell and hot water to find the couple of 13 spokes to put on Shea Lisi's Green Goblin. And then just this crappy old beater comes across my desk and I'm like, well, that would have been nice. Well, luckily, these things are uh, a lot more affordable than the cast ones are to get. So uh, these, uh, these Moto Iron TC Brothers spoke wheels are, like I said, Super affordable, really easy to get, and uh, hey, I'll make my money back by selling the cast wheels, trust me. What's really funny is I'm probably gonna make enough money to, just from selling the cast wheels off that bike to pay for pretty much everything I've shown you right now. So yeah, I said I was gonna try to keep the budget under a certain amount, but I, I don't know, do I, get to, do I get to count selling parts off the bike? Do I get to count selling things as part of my budget and subtract that from it? I mean, it is, right? We're gonna do it that way? We're gonna do it that way. We're really going low do on this one. Now, obviously, you can get a 19-inch front wheel or a 21-inch front spoke. You can get that super easily for a Sportster. What's harder is the rear tire. So, the rear tire are usually 16 inches. Luckily, TC Brothers has a fix for that. The problem with a 16-inch rear wheel is if uh, nobody really makes off-road tires with a 16-inch rear wheel, they're all 18 inches. There's a couple of companies that make a off-road tire in a 16-inch uh, rear, rear rim size, but to be totally honest with you, it, I wanted a little more options than that. So, and I know there's dudes who've taken other stuff and laced things to Harley hubs, but you know, I didn't have to do that because TC Brothers just sells an 18 inch rear wheel ready to go. And speaking of tires, I don't know if these will be my final tires, I'm definitely gonna test them out, but I've got the Shinko, what is the designation of these things? Shinko 804 Dual Sport Tires. The Trans American Trail still has a fair amount of on-road stuff. I learned that from watching, I didn't know, but I learned that from watching Adam Sandoval's video on when he did the Trans American Trail in an African Twin. It's got a lot of on-road stuff, so having a pure dirt bike tire would be kind of a pain in the ass. So I don't know how well these Chinko 804s are gonna split the difference, but there's only one way to find out. All right, y'all, now that I'm surrounded by motorcycle parts, a place I'm very comfortable being, <laughs> I think that's gonna about do it for this video. Uh, I'm very excited about this, mostly because it's out of anything I've ever attempted to do on a motorcycle, whether it be me and Shay Lisi doing her Green Goblin build, to me building my first chopper to a lot of the projects I've done on some of the some of my other bikes, my other what we call them builds, whatever you want to call them. This is the most organized I've ever been. 
I, I feel like I have a clear goal. I have a clear cut path. I know exactly where I'm going, almost, you know. <laughs> Once I get on the bike and everything's done, where I'm going is gonna be a lot more dicey, but I really can see a finish line and I'm just getting started. I haven't even turned the first wrench, but I can already envision the finish line. There's a couple more things I have to get. Obviously, I'm gonna have to get some rear shocks for the bike. I'm gonna call it Race Tech probably and have them custom made for a taller length and made for my weight. I might be able to get away with just cutting the fender or maybe I can just leave the fender alone. Not really sure what I'm gonna do about the front fender. I've seen a lot of guys just like stick a dirt bike fender on there. Personally, I think that looks kind of goofy, so I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not, but I gotta figure out something because I'm gonna have to run a fender. Then of course, there's gonna be risers, different bars, couple different stuff like that. Uh, hand guards, of course. Like, I got a few things that, that I don't have yet, but what I have right now is a damn good start. So I'm gonna start with this and we're gonna go from here. Super excited about this one. Dual Sport Adventures. The Sportster hits the dirt. It's been done before countless times. Everybody wants to turn a Sportster into a dirtster, but you know what? I wanna do it. I wanna build a cheap bike. You know what? I had such a good time on the Harley Davidson Pan America. I said, I wanna have a Harley Adventure bike. I love the Pan America. I can't afford a Pan America. I can afford a 2001 Sportster. So that's what we're doing. And when everybody's gonna go, why'd you, why'd you pick a rigid mount? Why'd you pick a hard mount? Why a rigid mount? Why a hard mount? Sports still don't cry. Well, I'll tell you all this right now. Shade Tree Surgeon don't fuck with the rubber, and he certainly doesn't need to ride with the rubber. I was born rigid, baby, and that's the way it's staying. Till next time, y'all, keep it weird. <laughs>